Hello, chemistry. How are you doing? Are you ready for another flipped lecture? We are going to be talking today about polyatomic ions and polarity. Um, we're pulling some topics uh, ahead from chapter seven into this lecture because you will need those concepts for labs that we're doing now, and the, they're not taught fully until next chapter. So this is mostly chapter six, but with some topics from chapter seven. Okay. And uh, so we're going to review real quick an ion. You know what an ion is. An ion is an atom that has gained or lost electrons and so it has a charge. Now that concept you're familiar with on the atomic level with just one atom at a time. Here's a, uh, a picture of fluorine. Fluorine has a valence shell that is one electron short and so uh, it wants to steal one more electron to be satisfied, right? It's a klepto electron and when it gets that additional electron to be satisfied it now has a negative one charge. That's how ions work. Ions can also be created by multiple atoms bonding together and forming an ion as a group. And we call that a polyatomic ion. Poly means many, many atoms uh, forming an ion. How does that work? Well, let me show you a picture. Um, actually, let me tell you first. <laughs> so um, usually polyatomics are, they're covalently bonded uh, atoms. And when they all share their electrons around, to form the covalent bonds. They don't quite have enough electrons to satisfy everybody. Or in one or two cases, they have too many electrons. So they will steal electrons from the universe around them, from the, uh, the atoms in their environment. And then they will be satisfied and they will now have eight electrons that they're looking at, um, that they're sharing amongst all of their valence shells, but they will have stolen electrons from their environment so they will therefore have a negative charge. So polyatomics almost always negative, um, and they are covalently bonded molecules that have stolen electrons from around them. So they are now an, an ion taken as a group, but no one atom um, is the ion. Like you can't identify one atom and say, you're the thief and you carry the charge. It's the whole, the whole molecule that is now the charge, okay? So look at this, this is sulfate. SO4. And so it's a sulfur that is sharing two electrons with each of four, elect of four oxygens. So it has eight and all the oxygens have eight and they're all happy, but they didn't all come to the molecule with that many electrons. So sulfur has six valence electrons to begin with. There's one of those. Oxygen has six valence electrons to begin with. There are four of those, which means six plus uh, 24. I should have 30 valence electrons uh, to work with. But if I were to then go count all the electrons in sulfate, I find that it has 32. And so the two extra electrons make this a polyatomic ion. The, they have stolen two electrons from their environment and they have a negative two charge. So SO4 is a negative two polyatomic ion. And you can figure that out by doing the Lewis structure and seeing, okay, they're not quite happy. How many more electrons do I have to draw in to make this work? Okay, and then that can cut, give you the charge. Just another example here, this is, um, this is ammonia. Now ammonia is weird, um, I'm sorry, ammonium is, the, is one of the few examples of a positive polyatomic ion. So what happens here is one nitrogen forms a covalent bond with four hydrogens. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, each hydrogen has one, one, two, three, four, plus five is nine, but it only needs eight to make it the, itself happy. So it kicks out the one extra electron, it's fired, and it goes flying off into the environment somewhere. And this now, NH4, is a plus one. Okay, so this is a positive polyatomic ion. One more example, this is phosphate. Um, each phosphorus has five valence electrons. Each oxygen has six. Uh, six times four is 24, plus five is 29. But in order to draw this and have it all be happy, we need 32. And so they've stolen three electrons from their environment and they wind up with a negative three charge. So PO4 is a negative three polyatomic. So polyatomics are just covalent molecules that have stolen from their environment to be happy and now they have a charge, okay? When we draw these things, we draw the Lewis dot structure um, like before, but then we wanna bracket the Lewis dot structure and write the charge outside the bracket. So we're saying that this structure has stolen two electrons from the environment. Now here they identified which two they are in the Lewis structure, but 
you have no way of knowing where those electrons landed. Um, there are just two of them in here somewhere. We're stolen from the environment, and so we have a negative two charge. Here's another example. Um, this is a, a molecule now of sodium nitrate. The nitrate, NO3, is a polyatomic ion, and sodium is a polyatomic ion. Now, this, sorry, not polyatomic, sodium is just an ion. And so the, the bond between sodium and nitrate is an ionic bond, but the bonds between all the nitrogens and the oxygens are covalent. Okay, so this is an example here of a covalent molecule that is also involved in ionic bond. The covalent nitrate, nitrogen is a double bond to this oxygen, single bond to each of these two oxygens, and in order to draw enough electrons around everybody, I had to steal one from the environment. So it's a negative one. Nitrate's a negative one charge. Sodium, when it forms an ion, is a plus one charge. So the positives and the negatives attract. And just like sodium chloride, this is now sodium nitrate. And we have a, uh, an ionic bond and covalent bonds at the same time. All right. Now, polarity. This is where I need to pull ahead from chapter seven because the labs we're going to do require you to have this information. So um, electrons in covalent bonds are not always shared evenly. In all the illustrations we've done so far, we've drawn a pair of electrons floating in space between two atoms, and it looks like each atom shares them nicely, right? That's not always the case. Sometimes one atom is more electronegative. It wants the electrons more. It's pulling on electrons strongly, and that attraction pulls the shared electron pair closer to that atom and further from the one that is not quite as strong. And so that forms what's called a polar covalent bond. The electrons spend more time around the more electronegative atom than they do around the less electronegative atom. So it's still being shared, but it's shared unevenly, okay? Um, and so we have here um, this, this not even sharing, we call it a polar covalent bond. Polar because the a more electronegative atom feels like it's kind of electrically negative because it has the electrons more often than the other one, which feels kind of like it's positive because it has the electrons less often, okay? So the shared electrons actually are found closer to the more electronegative atom. This means that some parts of the molecule are slightly positive and some parts are slightly negative. Here's some pictures. So um, hydrochloric acid, hydrogen and chlorine in an ionic bond, but hydrogen is not nearly as electronegative as chlorine is. So the electrons spend more time around chlorine than they do around hydrogen. And so chlorine is partially negative, hydrogen is po partially positive. Water, hydrogen again, not nearly as electronegative as oxygen. So oxygen pulls the electrons that it shares with these two hydrogen atoms closer to itself. It has the electrons more often. The oxygen is partially negative. The hydrogens are partially positive. Okay. When we indicate this in a Lewis dot structure, we use the um, the lowercase Greek letter delta. Now you've seen delta before as the like triangle symbol. That's the capital delta. Lowercase delta looks like a figure eight that you didn't finish. You draw it and then you stop. Okay. Um, and that lowercase delta is what we use for a partial charge. I don't know why we use delta, but we do. That's the, the habit of chemists. So um, when we draw carbon tetrachloride here, the, um, the chlorines are sharing an electron pair with the carbon, but each of these chlorines pulls harder on that electron pair than the carbon does. So each of these four chlorines are partially negative. So we write delta negative, delta negative, delta negative, delta negative. And then the poor carbon is losing out on four tug of wars at the same time. And he is delta positive. He's partially positive. Now he still eventually gets these electrons as well, but they spend much more time around the chlorine than they do around the carbon. Okay. Um, and we can predict polarity using differences in an atom's electronegativity that you can see from the table. Um, so there you go. Polarity. Why do we care about this? Well, it affects solubility. Polar things dissolve polar things. Uh, Non-polar things dissolve non-polar things. It affects crystalline structure. Polar molecules crystallize differently than non-polar molecules. And it uh, controls the, the interactions with electromagnetic fields. You can
uh, manipulate molecules that are polar and get them to orient themselves in space based on electromagnetic field. You can't do that with nonpolars. Okay? Um, think of a polar, co polar covalent bond as the in-between step um, between ionics and covalence. And in ionic, they're, sharing, they're not sharing anything, and they're both fully ions. In a covalent bond, a non-covalent bond, they share everything perfectly, and there's no polarity at all. In between, we have this like tug of war where they're covalent, but they're not evenly matched. It's a tug of war between a big dude and a little person, okay? Um, and so the big dude wins most of the time. And so we have here the, uh, the in-between kind of bond, right? And just again, to help you see that, non-polar covalent, two things which share the electrons evenly. Ionic, they don't share them at all. And they're attracted because one has stolen from the other. And a polar covalent, they share, but uneven. So again, dogs help us understand this. Here's the, the little illustration that I've been using throughout these concepts. Uh, two dogs have a bone each and they share the two bones, but one of them pulls harder, right? And so this is a more electronegative dog and the other one is a partially positive dog. Okay, see so yeah, how that works. There you go. Uh, you can use the uh, periodic table of the elements to predict polarity. So if you have a bond between nitrogen and oxygen, nitrous oxide, those are very similar in electronegativity. They're right next to each other in the periodic table. And so it's a pretty non-polar bond. That's a, that's a bond that is gonna share electrons evenly. But when you have water um, and you're sharing between hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen is a long ways away from oxygen. It is not nearly as electronegative. So it's gonna lose the fight and oxygen's gonna hang out with the electrons more often than hydrogen does. And so we have this uh, partial positive, partial negative polar situation. All right, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments field below. I'll get to them as quickly as I can, or I will see you in class. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a great night. Now.